Hello my dears, this is Sarah from SheHoldsDearly.com and today we are back again with a little furniture makeover. I want to talk to you about mismatching nightstands and just give you a little 101 lesson on what to do with nightstands, how to make them look cottagey, how to make them look farmhousey and the things that I think are deal breakers and things that are more optional. I have a group called Behind the Scenes. It's a decorating group. We have weekly classes. It's a private group. I only open the school twice a year to the public and so the next opening will be in the fall. If that's something that you think you're interested in, there's a link in the description below for the wait list. But one of the things I really encourage my girls in that group to do is get comfortable mixing furniture up. So bring in all kind of eclectic pieces and have them work together. I just think it brings so much character to, to a room. And so in a bedroom, a really easy way to do that is to have two different nightstands. There's a few things that I recommend when choosing your nightstands. Even though I love the, the mismatched look, I do think that you should end up with, with two pieces that are the same height. And you can see in my room that I actually, my two end tables are not the same height. One of them is a little bit lower, so I stacked up some books just so that my table lamps on both sides of the bed actually are the same height. So that's something you can do. You can alter the overall look by adding in pieces to lift decorations, but in the end, you wanna stand back and see that, oh, the two lamps are the same height. Okay, so, so figure out how to make them the same height and also the same color. I think that always is, is a win-win a and really has it, really pulls it all together. So I found my two tables. I found this one at Hamilton's Antiques, which I have a whole video on where I take you guys um, on my little shopping spree at Hamilton's. The other table with the flowers on it beside my bed, I bought that just a few months ago. I love the patina of the the most recent table that I bought. I love the, the green chippy look. And so I am going to match this one to the other table by using milk paint. I previously actually had had my green card catalog, which I have a video on that, how I upcycled a little dresser that I got off Craigslist, put some industrial casters on the bottom and made it kind of look like a card catalog. I had that for my nightstand, but honestly, it filled the space too much where it was, and it just felt kind of claustrophobic. So that, that sent me on the hunt to find the little green table, which had, you know, the legs and nothing underneath. So it's the same width as my card catalog, but because there's all this air underneath, it doesn't feel claustrophobic. So that's a trick too, if you're needing to kind of make a space feel a little bit lighter. Go with an actual table for your nightstand instead of something that's a solid piece. All right, so my goal now is to match this nightstand to the table on the other side of the bed. And if you wanna get a good like chippy look, you want to go with milk paint. So milk paint does actually have powdered milk in it and it's the oldest form of paint. You know, cave paintings and things, those are milk paint. It's just powdered milk with some minerals and some coloring pigments. I love Miss Mustard Seed paint, and my all-time favorite green is called Boxwood. Miss Mustard Seed, I just heard, sold her company now to another owner, but you can still get this paint. She didn't She didn't close it down. It's still a wonderful product. She just doesn't own it anymore. So I actually painted this little green stool behind me in Boxwood green, and I get asked all the time, what color is that stool? It's Boxwood. Love it. It's what I use in my card catalog. I use it whenever I can. Perfect green, perfect green. So one thing that I think is gonna look really good is this dark wood underneath. I'm okay with it peeking through just like it is on the other table. I don't know if I'm gonna do two coats. We'll have to find out as we go. I'll do some distressing and I'll go ahead and seal it with some wax. Now, I do have a big question mark in my mind, which is usually what happens when I'm designing this drawer. I don't know if I wanna switch out the knob. I do have this little one from Hobby Lobby in my stash that I thought might be cute. But I also thought, oh, this would be cool if this was just raw wood. And my husband said, well, if you take the, this, the original pull off and fill the holes, you'll be able to see them with raw wood if you put this little green one on. So I now have this dilemma. Do I leave the handle with raw wood or do I repaint it and put the green on it and fill the, fill the holes first? 
and put the green on it. So I'll be making that decision as we go along. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Let's get going on how to prep your milk paint. You wanna add your water first and you're gonna add one part water to one part of this powdered milk paint. I think I'm gonna mix a half a cup of water with a half a cup of my milk paint. And I do have these grimy old measuring spoons which help. I just keep them in my painting stash so it's something you could do too. Okay, I'm gonna go grab some water. I mix this for one minute, and now I'm gonna let it sit for 10. I'm gonna mix it for one more minute, and then we can get started. Meanwhile, I am going to strip this paint off and try that look. I love citrus strip. This is such a small, small project that I'm not gonna wear gloves. I'm just gonna squirt a little on there, and then wipe it on with my paintbrush, and let it sit for 15 minutes, and it'll roll usually scrape right off. So letting it sit for 10 minutes helps to thicken it. It kind of settles at the bottom so you want to give it another Another stir for about one more minute. So my friend Andrea over at Pine and Prospect Home loves this little brush called Wooster, W-O-O-S-T-E-R. It's like a little kid trying to say rooster, Wooster. She says, this is her favorite paintbrush, so I'm trying it out. And the big deal is that it has this like bendy handle and it's ergonomically kind of like holding a pencil. And then you can get in, I guess you can like get in these tight places and you don't have the handle like hitting on things. So let's try it out. Periodically stir up your milk paint again because it does kind of settle at the bottom. While my paint is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and scrape off that other paint. I have this scraper tool, which I'll link for you. But look at what that product does to the paint. I might have to do a couple coats of that citrus strip. So I got a second coat on that little drawer 
And then I just want to show you what milk paint does. As it dries, it starts to naturally flake. And you never know where it's going to happen. Sometimes it'll do it a little more than you want it to. Um, but look, I mean, I'm just, just wiping it off. Gives you a little bit of vintage chippiness. And then I'm going to seal that with wax in a little bit. I actually, because I am okay with the brown showing through, I don't think I'm going to do a second coat. I'm just going to stop at one. I might do a little of my own distressing with some sandpaper. All right, I'm getting ready to sand now, and I love 220 grit. That's my go-to sandpaper that I use when I remake furniture. I cut it into thirds. And as a little bonus tip, cutting sandpaper with scissors sharpens your scissors. So I've got three strips here, and I'm gonna fold it, fold one of them in thirds, and then I'll sand with that. I'll flip it over, I'll do the second side. I'll fold it over again, and then I have my third side. That's how I like to use my sandpaper. And I'm just kind of hitting the, the parts that stick out on the furniture to kind of accent them. We're in our fourth layer of citrus strip. It's going well, but I think that we just need this last one, hopefully. I have an old t-shirt here. You want the really soft kind, and we're gonna put the wax on. And I heard a tip the other day, we're gonna try it. It is to, if you're gonna use dark wax, which we are gonna use, that you always put on a clear coat first, just to kind of condition the paint and the wood so that the dark goes on really nice and even. So we'll see how we like it. I am gonna get a glove. I usually wear I usually wear a glove on my right hand when I wax. So here's my clear wax, and I love Annie Sloan, as you may know. All right, clear coat is done. Now I'm gonna add the dark wax, and then I really need to make a decision on this drawer. Okay, so I thought about this. I really feel like that's too small. And I do, I did have this crystal one that's really pretty. I might do that and not this one. I'm gonna use these Ikea baskets. The more I thought about turning this to raw wood, I felt like it would clash with what I have peeking through already. So I'm not gonna do that. I really do wanna to go towards raw wood as much as possible in this room. So I don't want to do a ton of this, but I guess little touches of it is, is all right. I think what I'm gonna do is actually paint this green. And then I'll either use this or I will fill the holes and use this. The other thing I can do is take some rub and buff and make this a really pretty gold. I think, honestly, I think that that might be better since this is gonna be my husband's nightstand. I feel like this might be a little too girly for him. He, he, he puts up with a lot <laughs> my decorating. But I think just making this gold on green might be what we do. So let's, let's try some stuff here. Thank you. 
All right, here we are. I got it all, all waxed. Decided to do the brass pull. I just uh, went over it with some rub and buff to make it a really nice, even muted gold. And I like how it plays with the baskets. I felt like the glass was a little more feminine than I wanted here. So I love how what I've done like really brings out the detailing, like this dental work here. And yeah, I think it looks really authentic and is gonna work just great. So hopefully you got some good ideas and you feel like more confident about how you can mix and match your nightstands in your bedroom. And thank you so much for stopping by. And if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I post regularly and I share my DIY design advice and our vintage farm life. All right, take care. I will talk to you soon. Uh-oh, I think I got green paint in my hair.